I'm looking back at the albums I heard growing up. Not the big ones like Sweet Baby James or Songs of Love and Hate, just deeper cuts. Here are the albums that made me. As my high school years were wrapping up, I started noticing something. From the time I started learning guitar at age 12, I was drawn to the music in my mom's record collection because they were approachable for someone learning music. Plus, I'd grown up with a lot of this stuff, so it felt very natural for me to explore it more deeply. But all around me, popular music, rock music, and hip-hop were all making very clear efforts to distance themselves from the music of the 60s and early 70s. Which makes some sense, sure, that's what always happens, but it also meant that my musical tastes were markedly different from those of my classmates. But, starting around 1986 or so, a lot of the big artists from the 60s and 70s started reappearing. Pink Floyd released A Momentary Lapse of Reason, Bruce Springsteen released that enormously popular box set of live recordings, August by Eric Clapton, In the Dark by The Grateful Dead, Tango in the Night by Fleetwood Mac, and of course, Cloud Nine by George Harrison. And I guess what got me into this album was the video for I've Got My Mind Set On You, the second one, the one where he's sitting in a leather chair in a big wooden room while all the furniture goes nuts. Partly because of all the furniture going nuts, but also partly because I couldn't get over how George Harrison frets a B chord. And once I got the cassette, I played the heck out of it. That was one I rescued more than once using tweezers and a pencil from my tape player when it decided to eat it. <laughs> what kept me coming back more than anything else was the tone and the precision of his slide playing. I don't know that he gets enough credit when we talk about the pantheon of slide players. Sure, there are better improvisers out there, but nobody has a better technique than George Harrison. Standout tracks for me are the title track, Cloud9, and Devil's Radio. Final analysis. Is this an album I still like? Yes, I don't know that I've heard a George Harrison solo album yet that I don't like. Is this an album I still spin regularly? I mean, once I discovered All Things Must Pass and Dark Horse, all his other works kind of went to the back burner a bit, but... I still revisit this one occasionally. Would I recommend Cloud Nine? If you haven't heard it yet, yes. Cloud Nine and 33 and a Third, I think, are his two most often overlooked albums. I said- 